three Brits with an eye for a deal get 800 euros and a day at a French market. Whoa. 50 euro? I know. No, I don't know what to do. With expert help from Mark Franks, they'll be looking for bargain buys. Listen to this. Whatever, Napoleon, whatever, yeah. these are 1,900 plus. Back in Britain, they'll upcycle their gear. Yay. We've definitely increased its value hugely. And try to sell. I'm going to be rude and honest. I can what? pick that up on Portobello Road for about <laughs> 100. Whoever makes the most money walks away with everyone's profit. Now is the moment of truth. competition is set in the city of Nantes, northwest France. Located on the Loire River, this bustling town dates back to pre-Roman times. And today, these ancient streets are lined with professionals trading at the weekly market. Nantes is no different from the markets in the UK. The early bird really does catch the worm. This market's been here for over 100 years, and there's roughly 100 stallholders. I've had a quick look round, and to be honest, there's bags of stuff worth buying. The real question is, when you buy stuff, can you make a profit? Buying's easy, selling is the hard bit. And on the prowl for those bargains today are three amateur enthusiasts from the UK, all of them hoping to find the best items to turn a profit back home. First up is Dan, who works as cabin crew and got the bug for renovation projects while doing up his flat. Whenever I go to the market, I always look for my favourite style, which is French shabby chic. I am quite competitive, but I feel this is going to bring out an even more competitive side in me, definitely. Next up is Jess, a professional drummer and a bit of a retro-loving rock chick, who in her spare time likes to trawl vintage clothing shops for 50s fashion. My knowledge on antiques isn't great, but I like to think that I've good style with my retro things and I think I understand what's fashionable and stylish in homes and hopefully the buyers will think that too. And the last of our trio, Terry, a fire officer from London. When he's not attending emergencies, he's got a sideline hobby buying bargains and selling them for a profit. I like stuff which is colourful, uh, big and unusual. Although I can't speak the language, I'll use my body language to try to maximise my relationships with the people selling. They'll have help from our resident expert, Mark Franks. He's been dealing homewares and collectibles for over 25 years and will be there to steer them in the right direction. There is so much stuff here to see. Terry, you revved up and ready to go? I'm all ready to go, Mark. How's Money? your French? Not very good, Mark, I'm afraid. No, we're in trouble, aren't we? Well, there's wheats on, 800 Thank euros. You. If okay. you want any help, give me a shout. Jess, what's the early morning starts like for you? Rock and roll? Yeah, rock and roll. <laughs> rock and roll, you don't mind, do you? <laughs> Now, Jess, let me give you some money. There's Thank 800 you. euros. Dan is 800 euros Thank for you, you as well. Much. A little birdie tells me your French is pretty good, Dan. Yeah, what are you going to be looking for bad. today, though? Uh, interiors, my kind of style. Yeah. My kind of style. <laughs> Not giving anything away, is he? <laughs> Cheeky monkey. Right, time is limited with the buying. The person who spends their money first chooses where they sell first. So, guys, get buying. Go. Our would-be dealers have just five hours to spend their money. I'm going to look round and then I'm going to go bang, 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 bang and buy stuff. Mark has given us a few tips on what we should be looking out for, um, so hopefully I'll find some of it. <laughs> I think I have an idea of what will sell, but uh, we'll soon see, I suppose. <laughs> With all of our trio out to win, it's Dan who's the first to find something he likes the look of. I'm quite into kind of 1950s for my creek kind of coffee tables and things at the moment. They're really in. It's got a great floral print on it as well. Vous pouvez prendre 50. 50, ça me fait un peu juste 60, si vous voulez. 60? Ouais. Alors 60, oui, je le fais. Okay, Merci. <laughs> so I've just bought that for 60 euros. Well, before you can even say wham, bam, thank you, Dan, he snapped up the first deal of the day. I know this market only lasts a few hours. True. But Not you really. are on fire. Oh, thank you very much. Thank and you. And I love it. Good. It is Good. completely on vogue. How much are you going to sell it for? I reckon I could sell that for 100. Are you happy? I am very happy. 99 more stalls, roughly, to look at. Yeah. So get cracking. Thanks Goodbye. very much. I will. Love it. 60 euros. It's really, really nice. Will he get £100 for it? 
Mmm, I'm not sure. So Mark has his doubts about the coffee table, but at least Dan's spending, unlike Jess. I'm hoping just to find something that's really got the wow factor for me. So I'm going to keep browsing and hopefully I'll find something. Well, don't browse too long, Jess, as the good stuff gets snapped up quick, probably by your rivals. Terry has already spotted a chandelier he can see profit potential in. I really like this. It's, uh, it, the only concern with this is that some of the chrome is quite pity, but I, I, I like that. I think it's got a bit, a bit of character about it. I just need to find out how much it is. Bonjour. Uh, uh, how much, please? 110. Uh, 110? Yeah. Would you take 50? Uh, no. No? Nice try, Tal. <laughs> no? How low? 90. 90. It's too much. Oh. So if I shake your hand and I pay you 80 now. 80. How much? Uh, 80. 80. Uh, 80. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, seven. Oui, oui, uh, 80. Uh, eight, zero. Yeah. Now, yeah? yeah. Show me. Done. Well, I'm not sure either party knows what happened there, but somehow they managed to strike a deal. Terry will have to get the lamp checked out back home. And if it needs work to make it safe, that could be an extra cost. 72 quid. OK, it's not bad. It's really stylish. It's bang on 1950s. And if the pan's all in great condition, that's hugely important. The pitting is so deep that I would advise you not to polish it. All you'll do is get the gold to jump out and be really in your face. Gently clean it and sell as it is. I still see a profit in there. I think you're doing well. Happy days. Carry Thank on you. buying, get going. So Terry and Dan are both off the mark and eager to get their next purchase. I'm kind of nervous. I'm just wanting to spend the cash and make sure I spend it wisely. I need to divorce myself from my personal choice and think about something that I can make the most profit on. And Jess isn't far behind the boys as she spotted something that set her in a spin. I found a lovely little record player, made, made in Belgium as well, so it's sort of quite authentic and so very nice. We've got some very old records as well. These are great. But then again, I'm probably buying from my own tastes rather than anyone else's, but it's, it's pretty cool. But um, I'm not sure this works, so unless it was super cheap, I wouldn't be buying it. Uh, Say combien? Uh, 90. 90? Yeah. Doesn't sound super cheap to me, Jess. 80 if you want. We can take 40. 40? 40. 40 euro? Oh, no. I can't, no. <laughs> uh, best price, 70. 45. 50. It's a good price. Oh, well, she might have done it gently, but it turns out Jess is a hard-nosed negotiator. And she also picks up a chest for 30 euros like a pirate's treasure chest, which is pretty cool. It's quite rusty, it would need a lot of work, but then that's kind of its charm as well, because it is a really, really cute piece. Dan's also eyeing up a second potential buy. OK, I've just seen these kind of 1960s chairs that have taken my eye. Bizarrely, actually, it's not usually my style, like 1950s and 60s, but I'm seeing a lot of that today. Alors, monsieur, le, le, je peux vous offrir peut-être uh, 50? Oui, thank you. Another short, sharp haggle from Dan, and he snapped up the 60s chairs for 50 euros, around 42 pounds. I'm, I'm pleased with that. They're going to need a bit of cleaning up, but I can obviously do that on a restoration day, so, so that's good. Across the market, Terry has also spotted a potential second purchase. Like Dan, he fancies a retro coffee table. I just like the slightly mirrored tile insert. I like the pattern. I like the size, the height. Uh, I quite nice, and, and I, you know, it's going to be a minimalistic uh, work that I need to do to restore this to a position where I think I can sell it for a profit. Time for some haggling, Terry style. Do you speak English? Uh, a little. A little. Hello. Later. Hello, nurse. Uh, bonjour. Yeah. How much, please? Sixty euros. Sixty euros. Okay. And from 1970. OK. 60 is too much for me. I'll give you 40. Oh. Yeah? No. no? Well, 45. 45? 45. Del Boy, eat your heart out. That's his second purchase, laying 45 euros on the table. I know with a little bit of tender loving care, I can restore that, and that's going to look very prestige. So I'm really, really positive about that. That's, that's a good buy. Our trio have all started well. 
Terry's got his hands on two items, spending 125 euros. Dan has handed over 110 euros for his two items. As for Jess, she's also managed to bag two items and she's laid out 80 euros. I know the pressure's on now, time's getting on and I need to find a few more items. I need to spend big and I need to buy big to get profit back. It's tough, it really is tough. Coming up, Dan gets an unexpected compliment. Never been called out before. And Jess is feeling overwhelmed. I've definitely got my work cut out here. Our three Brits are in competition to see who can buy the best bargains from a French market before taking them back to the UK to upcycle and sell for a profit. I'm feeling OK. I'm hoping just to find something that's really got the wow factor for me. After all the uh, bravado about buying big, I've uh, I spent 125 euros and I've been going for quite some time now. I haven't really spent that much cash, so I think my next purchase has got to be big. I need to spend big money. So all three rivals are now on the hunt for bigger pieces, and it's Dan who's first to spot something. He's found a chest of drawers he likes the look of, but he wants Mark's expert advice before he parts with any cash. Dan, what's going on? Talk to me. This chest of drawers, the man has painted this black. It's got a lovely finish to it, and it's one of the things that I could sell, I know, straight away when I get back to London. If you listen to this, do you hear that? Yeah, I do, yeah. It's a plywood bottom. If you saw this and he hadn't painted it, you wouldn't go near it. Really? But he's actually changed it, and it looks really, really nice now. Yeah. And how much? Oh, this is 350 euros. So that's 350. If you bash the price down on this, yeah, okay. you can make a profit. OK, thanks very do much. Do me proud, Dan. Remember, Dan, bash that price down. Qu'est-ce que c'est votre meilleur prix pour la commode? Meilleur prix. C'est 300 secondes. Tu peux aller 270? No, no, no. 300. 300 is final price, so. I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. 90, s'il vous plaît, je sais pas. Alors, 300. I'm going to buy it for 300. 300. 300 euros equates to roughly 270 pounds. I think Dan's going to have his work cut out to make a decent profit on this chest of drawers. So Mark's worried Dan might have spent too much, while Terry is worried he might not have time to spend enough. I quite like these. They're, they're slightly stained, but they're not, they're not damaged. They're not, they've got some nice carvings on them. I think I'll buy these. Time for Terry to unleash that South London charm. Hello, my friend. Uh, how, how much for uh, two, two chairs? Yeah, two. 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 Oh, oh. Two, zero. Uh, one or zero? Oh, no. Uh, yeah. Five. <laughs> no, no, it's too high. No, too high. Too no. One. <laughs> Low. <laughs> one, four, five. OK, allez. Thank you, my Merci. friend. Thank you. Merci voilà. beaucoup. Terry once again proves that language is no barrier when it comes to striking a deal. I could see him being used by, you know, just, just a couple sitting down with, a, with, with like, a small coffee table in a, you know, maybe a small little area in the kitchen where they have a cup of tea and a croissant. While the boys are splashing the cash, Jess, not so much, but she does have her eye on some old cinema chairs. They could do with a polish up. Obviously, there's, you know, a lot of marks on here, but then that adds to the charm. You know, they're obviously an old piece, so I wouldn't want to take away that character from it. Feeling unsure, Jess would like a little advice from Mark. OK, Jess, what you found? I found some old cinema chairs. Aren't they lovely? They're amazing, aren't they? I would say they're 1925, around about there. Now, fold that down, show me what happens. Look at that. So that's the aisle seat. How lovely. That's amazing. Now, I've previously sold these to hairdressers, OK? Because they squidge in and they're good for sort of waiting customers, but then you've got the room again afterwards. Yeah. How much are they? 120 euros. OK, 120 euros. It's just over 100 quid. Thank Get you. spending, Jess. That's a very good price. <laughs> oh, see, see. Uh, no. No? no, no. Best price is 120 euros. So uh, oh. I, I, I may take, uh, may take the gamble. 120 euros for the chairs, but she's not convinced they're a money maker. With some of the stalls beginning to close, time is running out for our three buyers to spend their cash. It's getting to me a bit now. We're running, we're running out of time. I know that. I need to find something to upscale uh, and quick. Dan may be looking for an upcycling project, but in the meantime, he's bought a painting for 50 euros that needs no work at all. 
flower painting is really on trend. I saw a lady earlier on in the market, she moved out to France. She buys up a lot of these paintings and sells them in the UK at big profit. So I'm going on uh, what she said, but she had quite a few of them, so fingers crossed. Dan also buys another picture and a bar sign for 35 euros. Merci. And the others are making quick fire purchases of their own. Whoa, don't want to break it. No, you don't. Jess buys a 70s light for 70 euros. While Terry reckons there's money to be made in this dustpan and brush. Someone may want to buy that who, you know, has to clean, who wears suits. It's quite an unusual piece. Along with a picture frame for 10 euros. Merci beaucoup. And he spotted a painting he thinks could have profit potential. But with artwork not his forte, he wants Mark's advice. Tell me how much you're going to sell it for. Come on. 60 pounds. This frame is quite fashionable. It's got like an artexy feel on it. Yeah. People do like them. Looking at the back, it's got a few dents and digs. Yeah. It's what I call an amateur hand. I'm not really mad on it. I think you'd have to be a very good salesman to get 60 quid for this. I think you could do better. All right. So no buy for Terry, but Dan's found two trunks he thinks are ripe for making a profit. These travelling chests are fabulous. I need to make the right decision here, and I need to make sure that I pay the right amount of money and still make a profit. Mm -hmm. uh, 160 euros. 160. 160. 160. 160. It's just what I prefer. Pardon? Dur. He said I'm a hard man. I'm a hard man. Never been called that before. Allez, on va faire comme ça. Alors, 160. 160. 160. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. 160 euros for the pair is around 135 pounds, and with that, Dan decides he's bought enough. That's me. That's it. I've done those last two trunks with the with the with the icing on the cake. The race is on for Terry and Jess, who now have less than half an hour before time is up. I'm definitely under pressure now. God, this is really hard. Under the cosh they may be, but Jess has come across a stall with some retro kitchen furniture that's caught her eye. I know this is a good example of for my car. Um, I don't know. I, it's not something I sort of have an interest in, so I've no idea of the value or if it, you know, it can, can be collectible. With Jess uncertain of what to do, Mark steps in. Jess, are you looking or a buying? I'm not sure. I think it's just because they're not, they're not my personal taste. Of, I love them. Yeah. I love them. Four mic is really in vogue. How much are they? Um, this one's 60 euros. Yeah. And this is 30 euros. Right, it's and what about the table? Money. I haven't asked about the table yet. There's a couple of words I want to say to you. Time. Yeah. It's running out. Yeah. And money. You've still got loads of it. I have, yeah. I've still got 600 euros left. <laughs> so, speculate to accumulate. <laughs> Try and get a job lot on the lot, yeah, you know, if you can, okay. get a good price on the lot. Yeah. Excuse me, what? Would you accept 115? Okay. Merci, okay. Merci. Jess picks up everything for 115 euros, and then she too decides to call it a day. I have no idea what the other guy is for. Jess finished with over 400 euros unspent, but Terry's on a last minute binge, splashing out 300 euros on a pot stand coat rack, some silver coat hooks and a pair of side tables. Apparently uh, from the Napoleonic age. Right, let's take a draw out and have a look at what we're looking at. Right. What's that, Terry? Is that like a plywood? That's plywood. It wasn't invented until about the turn of century 1900. Okay. So whatever Napoleon, whatever, <laughs> yeah. these are 1900 plus. Okay. They are restorable. They're a matching pair. They're not as old as you think. They're commercially saleable. As long as you don't call them Napoleonic. So that's Terry done as well. I can kiss you? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it for the first part of the competition. Dan has bought a total of eight items and spent 655 euros, which works out as just over 555 pounds. I could do it all again. I've enjoyed every minute. I can't believe I've finished already, actually. It's all gone a bit quickly. Jess has spent less than half her cash, 385 euros, or just over 326 pounds, and bought only five items. As the time started ticking away, I was getting a little bit more anxious about whether I was going to find enough items, but hopefully I've made the right choices. Terry has bought the most items with nine and spent 610 euros, around 517 pounds. With the chairs, the table and the light, I thought, I think I've had a good day, a good day at the market. With the first part of the challenge over, our competitors head back to the UK, where they've got just one day to upcycle their items before they sell them on for a profit. They've all done this before as a hobby, but this is about to get serious. 
once she's done drumming, Jess plans her day of upcycling. For this light here, um, I'm hoping to uh, have the pulley mechanism looked at so that it can be adjusted easier and it will hold in place. Now this, uh, I think with this pirate chest, I've definitely got my work cut out here. Hopefully I'll have a go at the uh, rust on the latches and uh, probably going to oil it up, make the wood look better. I got this. Jess is taking the chest to a metal workshop to have the rust blasted off. Go on, Jess. Put your back into it. That would have taken me so long to have done it off manually. Luckily, they've got the power tools to do it, so it saved me an awful lot of time, which is important for today. Saved her time, but cost her nearly a tenner. And when you're competing to make the best profit, every penny counts. The chest has come up better than I thought it would. The rust came away easily. You might get a pirate out there buying, and then if so, I've got the right chest for him. Meanwhile, over in Hove, Dan has ambitious plans for his big brown trunk. I've decided to mix two of my favourite pieces in my own lounge, my drinks cabinet and my lovely trunks, and I'm going to make this trunk into a drinks cabinet. He's hired a handyman to fit some shelves and hooks into the trunk. You're going to have a shabby chic, aren't Yeah, that's the idea, actually. Yeah, that's the idea. A shabby chic cocktail cabinet. It's a creative idea, but at £100 for the joinery, it's not cheap. At home in Kent, Terry plans to work on a few bits, including his chandelier. First job, though, cleaning his coat rack. I've noticed down this side there's quite a lot of white paint, so that's the first thing I need to do, clean this white paint off. Next up, replacing the missing shelf. Uh, I had this cut by a local glazier. Uh, first time, let's see if it fits. Right, excellent, it fits. Whoa, that's a relief finished with his coat rack, and Terry's only spent eight pounds. Coming up, Terry's chandelier could leave him in the dark. I don't think that this is suitable to go back into service in its current condition. And Dan is shocked by a buyer's offer. 60 on the chest. 60. Our three competitors have returned home with their French spoils and are working on transforming their items to increase their profit potential. Back home with Jess, her French 70s light needs some attention, so she's got in a couple of electricians for some help. I think it will work uh, with the cable you've actually got on there, but if you look down there, there's a hook plate which looks like it's snapped off. How many men does it take to change a light bulb? Two, it would seem. So this is going to be the moment of truth to find out if my light actually works. Fingers crossed. Ta-da! Oh, it's fixed, and all for 20 quid. And there's more good news as her broken gramophone has suddenly started working. Having the gramophone working is obviously a much better selling point. It was sold to me, it's not working, um, but I've obviously got it working. And uh, hopefully the buyer will love it as much as I do. I think it's amazing. Do you know what sort of gramophone this is? No, I wasn't entirely sure. It's called a picnic gramophone. OK. So this would have been put in the back of the old car and you'd have took it out with your basket for a picnic. This is a portable one, hence the metal corners. So sell it, push it, because mm. it's portable. Well, the chest definitely looks different. The top's much lighter than the sides and the front now. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but the, the metal work and the, and, and the uh, clasp look a lot better. So I think you've definitely improved it. So all we need is uh, a pirate. Top mm. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> At home with Terry. He's got an electrician in to check his chandelier. What we need is a pack test so that we conform with the, uh, the regulations back here. Do you know how old the fitting is? I was told 1930s. It's a nervous wait. These cables are degrading, so I don't think that this is suitable to go back into service in its current condition. OK. So I'm suggesting that this needs to be rewired. OK. The lamp holders need to be changed. Yes. And unfortunately, in this condition, it's failed the pat test. OK. This is not good news. With just one day to carry out all the work, Terry is out of time and is left with no choice but to strip the chandelier of all wiring. This will mean he can sell it safely, but will not be good for his profit margins. I really appreciate your help. You've just given me another job to do today. 
With the pressure on and his chandelier in bits, Terry has enlisted the help of his mum. She's touching up the paintwork on his table and giving the coat rack a paint job. Spray paint dries quicker than using a brush, and so it's done in a matter of minutes. All we're doing with this part now is we're putting this glass mirror into this hole. What could go wrong? Don't tempt fate, Tell. In! That's happy days. Put the clips back and I'm done. Terry. Hello, Mark. It's like good news and bad news at the OK Corral, isn't it, really? <laughs> it certainly is. Look at this. You've definitely increased its value hugely. It's, it's quite a smart thing. Chandelier. It turned into a nightmare. I got the wiring tested, it, the old wiring, and it failed the test, so I'm now actually selling it uh, unwired. Small electrical shops, electricians would do it in ten minutes yep. and wouldn't charge an awful lot of money. Make sure you sell that fact to them, yep. that it, it can be done, it can be done cheaply. OK. Back in Hove, the shelves and hooks are in the trunk, and Dan's handyman is preparing the liner. We are running out of time, but um, I have every confidence in David, and um, I'm, I'm pleased with the results so far, so, yeah, all good. Good. Right, you know there's no change in your mind now. I know, yeah, that's great. Once we glue this in, there's no varnish on top, paint on top. Do it quick before I change my mind. With the liner on and night falling, it's time for Dan to stock his new cocktail cabinet. Last but by no means least, my little tool for my champagne corks, because there'll be plenty of champagne corks popping when I win with my new little bar. Dan has spent £111 in total upcycling his trunk. Let's hope the air host's creative vision sees him a return. I'll just give you a quick demonstration. Oh, give us a twirl, Annika. There a twirl. we go. And it's actually on wheels as well, because I do love a trolley, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the exits? <laughs> <laughs> Pops two shelves on there, which are wipeable, and also some hooks to hang your corkscrew. Right, OK, what are you going to ask for this one? Around the 200 mark. I might be inclined to put a bottle of whiskey in it for that price. <laughs> well, you've got to start high. That's the bit of advice I've always given. Exactly. If you start high, you can always come down. If you get it wrong and somebody says yes straight away, you haven't started high enough. OK. <laughs> So upcycling done, it's time to sell. They've each got one day to shift everything. And whoever makes the most profit will win and take everyone else's money. Dan, Terry and Jess are fighting it out in and around London's Portobello Road, where there are a range of shops, dealers and private buyers, all eager to buy quality French goods. Our rivals will decide what prices they sell at and who to see. And once again, Mark will be keeping an eye on their every move. Now, if you get a guidebook of London, Portobello Road comes up straight away. It is one of the hubs in the capital for antiques and collectibles. So you guys have done your upcycling, and we're here to sell. How are you feeling? Nervous or excited? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit nervous. Who's going to win? <laughs> How are you doing, Terry? All right, yeah, yeah. How's your chandelier? Oh, I don't want to talk about the chandelier. Okay, I won't talk about it. Brings back nightmares. Dan, I love them shoes. Thanks Check very them out. Much. They're lovely. Nice Are they going to be shoes. running around today making money? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. All right, well, we better get on with it because the time is running out. Dan, you're first to get going. You've chosen your sellers. Let's get going. Let's go. And so they're off in search of the buyers who will give them the best price for their goods. I'm going to go in high, even a really silly price, just so that they don't accept something really low and I could have got more. I just want to make sure I can sell all my stuff in time before I run out of places to sell it. I've got to remain confident in front of the buyers and um, hopefully they'll like some of my pieces and we can get down to some dealing. As Dan finished shopping before the others, he gets first choice on where he starts his day. And he's chosen to meet Jane, who runs an interiors shop and is always looking for vintage and reclaimed pieces. With that in mind, Dan has brought along his signs and his big purchase, the chest of drawers. Might be gentle with me, Jane. I'm a beginner. So uh, <laughs> tell me what, what you're thinking, what your thoughts price-wise. I like the chest. So it's painted black, although it's got that kind of... Distressed. Yeah, distressed feature. And the sign's really fun. And this is not in great condition, but it could be fun. All part of its charm. Now we've got to come to the hard part. Yeah, this is the difficult part. Yeah, I'm afraid so. 10, 15 on, on each of those. OK. 60 on the chests. 60. Dan paid £254 for that chest. No wonder he looks shocked. The chest as it is, I think, is a, is a fabulous piece. Maybe a bit more? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do that price, unfortunately. I would start at, at 400 I think so, that's more of the price it would sell for, 4 450 It's slightly large for people's houses, that's another problem. Obviously, people in central London yeah. are looking for small. OK. 
So it's a no to Dan's key piece, the chest of drawers, but a yes for the sign in the picture, though only for £35, which is just a fiver more than Dan paid. Pull out a deal. With such small margins, Mark's keen to chat technique. Did you sell too quickly? Have you jumped in too fast? Possibly. I think a bit of nerves kicked in, but um, I'm really pleased I didn't, I didn't sell the chest of drawers because I'm, I'm, I'm sure that I can sell that for more. I think you've sold too quickly, mm. um, but don't be disheartened. Crack on and start high. Push, push, push. Every penny counts. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Terry is heading to his first potential buyer. He's targeting Jane and Fiona, who run a shop full of 50s and 60s gear and are interested in seeing a number of his items. OK, ladies, give the starting prices for the items. Raw iron hat stand is 650. The frame is 120 and the coffee table is 550. 550? Wow. Yeah. I can what? pick that up on Portobello Road for about 100. <laughs> oh, Bean Rumble, tell. Let me put the ball in your court for the price of that then. I. Percy wouldn't pay much more than, say, 120. I mean, it's a beautiful piece with all the detail, but I think it has been slightly restored at the bottom. Yes. Hasn't it? Yes, Which is I a shame, it because if it was, hadn't been restored, it'd be worth more money. I'm happy to come down to 210, 220. I love the colours. I think we both, yeah. Final price, 200. 210. Oh, you're pushing hard bargain. 200. <laughs> Two five, and we'll shake on it now. So 305. Nice. Thank you, There you go, Terry. Thank you. Thank you very well much. Well done, Tell. They might have only taken the table, but it's a big sale, as Terry bought it for just £38. First item sold. Uh, happy days, a nice, tidy profit made there. With both Dan and Terry off the mark, Jess is heading to her first buyer of the day to see vintage dealer Glenn, who often gets stock from France for his eclectic shop. As she struggled a bit in the buying, Mark wants to have a word before she goes in. You nervous? A little bit. What's your strategy? Excited. I'm going to be cheeky, charming and uh, start high. Well, you've got all of that apart from the height. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're going to be out on your own or do you want a hand? Can you give us a hand? Of course you can. Come and scan do. <laughs> Glenn is interested in a few of Jess's items, including her retro lamp, which with safety testing has now cost her around 80 quid. Jess, it's over to you. Do your magic. Got a lovely 70s light, very retro, and it's fully working. I've had it pat tested too, and it's safe. It's very nice, very French 70s kind of thing. I, I I buy quite often. I was looking for around 150. A little bit strong for me. Uh, it's more round about the sort of 75, 80 pounds. I was just you. You keep pushing to so even get a bit more out of him, but <laughs> I know he's not going to move too far. I've known Glenn a long while. Well, I'd like to make a little bit of profit on it. Mm -hmm. um, I paid a fair bit for it. Um, could we go kind of 130? I think if you could come to 100 and meet me in the middle, uh, we've got a deal. Can I be cheeky and say meet you in the middle between there, 110? She's trying hard then. She's pushing. She's trying very like, hard there. Then, oh, I, then, yeah. I made a, then I made a small profit on it. 105 just to, uh, yeah, to keep you straight. <laughs> okay, okay, I think you've got a deal, a deal there. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, it took a little help from Mark, but Jess manages her first sale of the day. She also persuades Glenn to buy her Formica kitchen set for £130, giving her a profit on that lot of a little over 30 quid. All of our competitors are selling. Terry's shifted one item with eight still to go. Dan has sold two, leaving him six. And Jess has also got shot of two of hers, meaning she's got just three items left. Coming up, things begin to get tough for our rivals. I'm going to be rude and honest. And the winner is revealed. Who's made the money? rivals are halfway through their one-day challenge to see who can make the most money selling their French bought items. It's a really hard competition, but uh, I think I think I'm doing well so far. I'm feeling a little bit more confident with my bartering techniques. I think just keep it cheeky again and hope that it wins. I'm still highly motivated. I still want to win, and uh, you know, let's crack on and get to the next place. Having sold two items for a good return, Jess is now taking her treasure chest and cinema chairs to see Jane at her interiors shop. They've got a few kind of shabby chic things, so hopefully if they like shabby, then uh, it'll be fine. I think they'll also like chic, Jess. Quite unusual to find these over here, especially with the aisle seats. That's quite rare. They're very There's nice. There's less of those made, original numbers on there. They're very quirky, very mm, nice. Very unique, aren't they? Very yeah. eye-catching. Yeah, definitely. I like those. 
What are you looking to get on those? Well, I was looking for around four ninety. I'm afraid they're way off there, but I mean, mm. I do like them a lot. So what would be your best price? Well, I, I could go to a hundred. Would you go anywhere around two fifty, two fifty region? No. Uh, what are you looking on the chest? It's a fun chest, so it maybe is. if we can do something, a deal with the two, maybe mm -hmm. one sixty for the two. I'd accept. You know, 200 probably on the seats, 40 for the chest, 240 for the both. I'll do 190 for the two. 195, shake on it maybe? All right, go on. Okay, then. fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay. She sold the chest for what she paid and made nearly 60 quid on the cinema chairs. And that means Jess has now made back everything she spent. I do deep down think I possibly sold my cinema chairs a little bit cheap. I thought I'd better just take it really in case somebody offers less than that. Jess is doing well with just one item left to sell, while Terry still has a few. And with time running out, he's rushing around touting his wares. A bit old fashioned for my kind of shop. Thank you very much. No luck there, but you know what they say if at first you don't succeed. £27 pounds, shake your hand and then you've got it. Yeah? All right, just, just to make your day. Terry only just clears a profit on the dustpan and brush. But you can win or lose this competition by the smallest of margins. I've got a lot of items left and I'm halfway through my shops. So I'm a bit concerned about the amount I've got, I've got left to sell. Better get a move on, Terry. And Dan needs to as well. Having only sold two items, he's off to see Fiona. But before he goes in, Mark wants to offer some advice. Fiona's got a lot of style. She knows her market, but you've still got to sell it to her. Push for every last penny. Okay. She's lovely, but she's nobody's fault. Come on, let's go and do some selling. Dan's brought in a few things to tempt Fiona, but she's already passed on his big money chest of jewels and doesn't seem keen on his cocktail cabinet. Don't know, great idea. Mm-hmm. Whether it would work? Not sure. Not sure. Next, Dan gets to the flower painting he bought for just over £40. I love the impressionist kind of feel to it. But it's the colours. The colours are really strong. Great, vibrant colours. The frame alone is fabulous. Price-wise... I would have to go in at 200 here, Fiona. I think go for that one, if possible, about 130. My absolute lowest price I could do on that is 190 because I know that that would sell. I know, I, and I know I could probably sell it at the next show as well. What's your bestest offer of all? Come on, give us your last price, your no badge price, and see if we can get a deal here. 150, lowest, lowest, if we can grow that. Absolute lowest. I mean, yeah. I, I... And I can throw in a pair of sequin <laughs> pants as well. If sequin. you give me 160, I'll wear the leggings for you. So That's there we go. Oh, That's, That's a deal. 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 There we go. <laughs> That's better, Dan. 160 pounds is almost four times what he paid for it. On to the light brown trunk. 165. Oh, I love 165. 160, I said. 160. And Do another pair of leggings. Yay! <laughs> One trunk sold for 160 pounds. Now, about those leggings. Da, 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 da. Look at that. Now we're talking. The things I have to do. While Dan parades around in his pants, Terry is at a local bistro trying to persuade Jimmy to buy his coat hooks and chandelier. This was from the 1930s. It was actually, it actually came wired. Yeah. Uh, I had it electrically tested and the wire, wiring failed, so it needs to be rewired. I've actually, I've actually kept... This is how I know the date. I've kept the old wire, which you're more than welcome to take with the light, but it dates it to about 1920-1930. These shades are made like this. You put wax around the rim and then they stain them with acid to give it the frosted look. There's no chips or cracks on any of them. I was looking for something in the region of maybe £200. I do like those, uh, I do like those too. This is ideal to stand, obviously stand your hats on and so on. So, yeah, I'm just interested uh, if you like them, if, uh, if you'd like to sort of discuss with me a price. How much price are you asking for for that? Uh, I am conscious you're buying two, so I'm willing, I'm willing to negotiate. Uh -huh. You make me uh, an, an offer. Two, two, two twenty, yeah. Uh... Two forty, and I shake your hand there, Jimmy, and we'll have a deal. And you've got a nice lamp for home, and you've got a nice hat stand. OK, Jimmy, thank you. You are a legend. So, despite his rewiring woes, Terry still clears nearly £130 on his chandelier and another £18 on the coat hooks. I'm really pleased and motivated. Uh, sold two more items, and I've got a few more to go. 
On a roll, Terry heads straight to see antiques dealer Tony, who buys his two brass rim tables for £175. And that means Terry's made back everything he spent and is in profit overall. But there's not much time left. Jess may have only one item to sell, her gramophone, but she's not having much luck shifting it. I would love it, but in the shop, I think it's going to be very difficult for us to sell. I think we definitely got caught up more with having fun than selling. And Dan is struggling to sell his upcycled trunk turned cocktail cabinet. He's had little interest in it so far, but he's hoping his fortunes will change with bistro owner Jimmy. So with your cocktail shakers, your uh, martini glasses, your bottle openers, your cloth. I love the original kind of travel stickers. Paris, 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 Paris where you're from Paris, as well. Yeah, it was good. OK. I like that. OK. Yeah, I've got insurance for that. Um, I sold one for 160. Like 90s, right away, cash, done. OK. Could I possibly push you to 110? It's the first bit of interest Dan's had in the cabinet all day. Better not blow it. Come on, it's going to look amazing. It will yeah, look I, amazing. I, I know, but it's, you know... <laughs> OK. So we're getting two. Should we what, sorry? 180, you want 110, we got that to 100, and that's done. Should we do 100? Oh, yeah. Deal. At last, Dan sells his upcycled cocktail cabinet for £100. I'm really pleased that uh, he loves it as much as I did. Despite the loss on the trunk, Dan's doing well. He's only £200 away from being in profit overall, with plenty still to sell, including his chest of drawers. But with the day drawing to a close, the pressure is on to make those sales. Now I think it's really time to nail the chest of drawers and try, try and sell that if I can. Terry is on his way to see antique dealer Mark, who specialises in French shabby chic furniture. It's a little bit like Last Chance Saloon. I've got four items, I need to sell them. I'm going to need to be very flexible on the price. Let's hope Mark likes what you have to sell then, Terry. I'm going to be brood. OK. And honest. Oh, dear. Not sounding promising. Um, pair of chairs, I think, uh, 20, 30 pounds worth. I'm costing a fortune to upholster, and currently they've got plastic on them. The commode table, if I bought this, it would probably be just to keep the marble. OK. So, again, 20, 30 pounds. The mirror, in that condition, simply okay. isn't for me. Shell-shocked by Mark's honesty, Terry moves on to the 1930s hall stand. It is in the style of Majorelle which is uh, 30s French. However, it is brand new, okay. so it's a copy. Just for its decorative value, maybe 20, 30 pounds. OK, OK. Would you be willing to pay me 120 pounds? And I shake your hand now, and you've got four items, and I'll throw the frame in. Frankly, no. I'm afraid the most I could go... 70. Uh, I shake your hand on 80. I'll split the difference. 75, you've got a deal. You've got a deal. Done. Thank you, Mark. Much appreciated. Thank you. It's not what he hoped for, but as Terry has already made back what he spent, that 75 quid is all profit. It's not the best end that I expected, but I, I always knew I was up against it because I had no other option, but I had to sell it, so... Already in profit, Jess is heading to Tony with her last item. But, as he specialises in architectural salvage, will he be interested in buying a decorative piece like her gramophone? I would love to just walk in there and have the buyer say, hey, that's amazing, I'd love to buy that. Yeah, it's really, really nice, but I'm afraid, as you see, looking around this shop, it probably wouldn't be for me. No sale on the gramophone. And it gets worse. Definitely the cinema chairs. That would have been something I'd have been oh, definitely really? interested in. They're like 250. Really? Yeah. Jess sold the cinema chairs earlier for £160, and if she'd have waited, Tony would have given her 250 for them. I debated whether 160, you know, was too little for the chairs, and I definitely know that it was now. But, um, you know, still made a small profit there, so it's OK, it's all good, I'm still happy, I'm still smiling. So pressure's on Dan as he visits his final buyer. He's yet to make his money back, though he does still have a number of big items to sell. But he's ending his day with tough dealer Mark. This is my last dealer of the day. He can literally make me or break me on this. So I really am needing him to buy more than anything the Chester drawers. It's got to go to a good home. Uh, we shall see. Oh, I wouldn't hold your breath, Dan. Mark's already hauled Terry over the coals, so get ready for a rough ride, starting with that chest of drawers. How old do you think this is? I, I, 1950s, I think, reclaimed. Um, I'm going to have to be brutally honest with you. OK. 
it's pretty much brand new. Really? Mm. Unfortunately, I don't think it's more than 10 years old. It's been blackened um, almost to this guy's age. How much do you need for it? I would say 350. Um, flying pigs, I'm afraid. 150 is my. It's your absolute last price. I have to sell this, Mark, so I'm going to go with your offer of 150. Okay. In that case, you have a deal. Thank you very much. £150? That's £104 less than Dan paid for it. But there is a silver lining, as Mark also buys Dan's coffee table for £55 and his chairs for £80, almost twice the price he paid for them. That last-minute surge puts him in profit, but is it enough to beat the others? I should have haggled more. I should have haggled more of that chest of drawers. I did, however, on the positive, sell the coffee table at a profit, and I also sold the chairs at a profit. It's the end of the day and selling is over. All three have worked hard trying to shift their items, but all three still have pieces unsold. So how will this affect their profit? Well, that's the easy bit over and done with. The selling, doddle, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on to your money, don't open it yet. There's cash in there. Two of you are literally a pound apart. Oh, no. Now is the moment of truth. Who's made the money? Take the money out of the envelopes now. You two have made roughly 70 or quid. Yeah. Terry made 90 or quid. Yeah. <laughs> Terry, you are the winner. Guys, the bad news is pass your cash across. Well done, Terry. So Terry is today's winner, having made just over £99. Jess came second with a profit pot of £74.13. And Dan made just 18 pence less, leaving him in third position. That gives Terry a total prize pot of just under £250. Oh, I can't believe I've won. It was so close in the end, the money and the profit, so just really glad that I managed to push a little bit more out on some of my sales, otherwise I wouldn't have been the winner with all the money. It was a really close call. I think if I was to do it again, I would have to work on my selling and bartering skills. The whole experience has been amazing. I've had so much fun and I've made two new really good friends. <laughs>